Hi, I'm Junior with Keystone RV Center. Today we're at one of our new Flagstaff Classic Superlights to show you how to winterize this. If you have an older Flagstaff Classic Superlight, check out, we're getting ready to do a, was it a micro light? We're doing a micro, not a shamrock, because me and Mark couldn't fit in the hole in the shamrock to get a video camera in there. But we're going to be doing one on that. Check on that. It may apply more towards yours. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to take our 1 and 1 16th socket and we're going to crank this hot water heater plug out. Now this unit already has been winterized. We're just going to go through the steps for you guys. That way you can see how to do it yourselves. So we're going to take our anoid rod out. My recommendation is obviously this one's brand new. If you've been camping with it all year, spend 15 bucks, buy a new one. Make sure your hot water heater is in the off position and then hit your pressure relief and that'll allow all the water to run out of the tank. Now there's two valves we've got to hit to do the winterizing. We're going to jump over here. We're going to show you how to make that connection on the outside and then we're going to go in the inside, show you how to bypass this and make your water connection there. All right, guys, we'll see you inside. All right, I said we'd see you inside and I was just trying to rush to get in there because I took my lovely Jayco warm jacket off because Jack has yet to send me a Flagstaff jacket. And I didn't, I like Jack. I'm not going to do the entire video in the, in the Jayco jacket for him. So out here, we're going to make our water line connection. If you guys haven't seen any of our other videos, what we're using is a five gallon bucket with about three gallons of antifreeze in there. Hose drilled in the top with just a uh, water line going down to it. That way it kind of holds in place. So that, we're going to make our connection there. Flip this valve right here. And then the last thing we're going to do, walk around your trailer, find where it says low point drain. You should see a blue and red line. Unscrew the caps, allow all the water to run out. Then go on, then screw the caps back on before going inside. We're going to skip that step today because I'm freezing. It's about 20 degrees out today. Um, we're going to go inside and we're going to go ahead and get that all started now. Mark is standing here with a beanie, a scarf, and his little warm hobbit feet and said that we're not allowed skipping steps during these videos just to make me more comfortable. So here's what your low point drains are going to look like. You have little caps right here. You guys can thank Mark in the comments uh, for looking out for you guys and make me do the full steps here. It is freezing today. Mark, we've showed this. Can we go inside now? Hi, I'm Junior with Keystone RV Center, and we're not upset about Monster not sponsoring us yet at all. So, underneath the sink here, just for reference, if you have this floor plan, you do not need to pull all this paneling out unless you're shooting a YouTube video to teach people on how to winterize their Flagstaff RV. So, back inside of here, we have one valve here, one valve here, and one valve here. The way this works, and we did a video on this that we'll uh, cut into here, we're going to shut the cold off coming into the camper, we're going to shut, or the, the hot water heater, we're going to shut the hot off coming out of the hot water heater and open the bypass valves. Mark, I'm kind of doing like a half sit up this entire time. Now, oh, one thing. This, I don't know what Forest River was thinking. This wrench to open and close the hot water heater valves doesn't work that well for that. I guess it's got a different purpose. I'm going to enjoy my Red Bull. This is the back side of a hot water heater. Now we touched on this briefly in the Catalina video, but here's what I want you to picture. These two black pieces here are what's going into the hot water heater. The red's going to be the hot side, the blue's going to be the cold. So during normal operation, water comes in, goes into the hot water heater, gets heated up, comes out, goes to the rest of the trailer. To bypass it for the winterization mode, what I want you to do is turn all the valves from their current position. This will apply whether it's a two valve, three valve, single valve, doesn't matter, okay? So what we've done is we've shut the water off. The position of this shows the position of the valves. So the water coming in now gets stopped right here and is now allowed to come up this way, tries to cheat its way back into the hot water heater, is stopped right there, then continues on the rest of the way. So when you're winterizing, it's pumped in, comes up, and then winterizes the rest of the hot water heater. If you're watching just the single video, not the full winterization video, make sure you pull the anoid rod out. Um, a common problem we'll see in the springtime, this valve, people will turn this one and this one, but forget about this one. What that'll do is give you about three to five seconds of hot water. 
and then it will go back. Make sure you turn all the valves come spring so the water comes in. Can't come up this way. So this should be summer and this should be winter. All right, so in here, we're going to find the water pump in the bathroom on this one. To locate yours, just turn the pump on and listen for the vibration noise. So we're going to flip this valve so it's pointed up, drawing from this line that's going outside. Now our water filter in, on Flagstaffs are typically right in the same area. You're going to use the supplied water filter wrench, take off the water filter housing, empty it completely, and discard the filter for the year. Go ahead and put it back on, turn the pump on, and the first cycle of water that's going to come in there is going to refill and it's going to be looking like a mixed uh, combination of antifreeze and water. Go ahead and shut the pump off at that point, take the filter housing off again, dump it a second time, then put it back on, screw it down tight, and then you should be able to run it through no problem. Um, then once you go ahead and have all that done, then you can start opening up valves, retrieve your Red Bull, and go ahead and run hot and cold water through all the filter, through all the lines throughout the entire trailer. Make sure you get the shower, both inside and outside. Make sure you do the sinks, and then make sure you take whatever is left of your three gallons of water and, and of antifreeze and dump down the drains. On the kitchen sink, make sure you dump down both drains. That way you're putting antifreeze down into those pee traps and again, making sure we do that again in the shower. If you guys have any questions, give us a call, 1-800-232-3279. And please tell Red Bull to sponsor us.